Calendar settings are one of the foundations of any project schedule. An activity's calendar settings determine which days are work days versus non-work days. We're going to take a brief look at the differences between global and project level calendars. Whether you're developing schedules for your own use or reviewing schedules provided by a third party, such as a subcontractor or a client, it's important to know what types of calendars are being used and how this could impact the data you're viewing. Global calendars are used to apply consistency to all projects in your database. When a global calendar is modified, it doesn't just impact one project. The changes affect every single project in your database using or referencing that global calendar. If you are working in a shared database with other users, this can drastically and unintentionally impact project schedules that you have nothing to do with. Let's walk through the import process and I'll show you an example of a problem that can arise if you're using global calendars. We'll import an XCR project and here's a sample I've prepared. Now, when importing a schedule into a database, the user has several options for how to handle data, such as calendars. Some of those options allow your existing data to be overwritten by the data in the imported schedule file. This can be bad, as it could mean importing a schedule with different date settings on a global calendar could overwrite data in your database, affecting all projects in that database. Alternatively, you can have your database ignore any differences in the imported schedule's global calendar and simply use your existing global calendars. This preserves your database, but it means that you may be seeing different dates on your schedule when compared to whoever provided it to you. Neither of these options are ideal. If you're importing a schedule and ignoring the incoming calendars, it's tough to know if the dates you end up seeing are what the person generating the schedule intended. On the other side of things, if you're the one generating a schedule to send to another user, you probably want the peace of mind of knowing that they're seeing the data as you intended it. There is an option when importing to create new global calendars in your database without overriding your existing globals. This is good for preserving all data while still seeing the dates intended, but it can start to clog up your calendar list very quickly if you do this for more and more projects. Let's take a look at the default configuration here by clicking Modify. And we go down to Calendars. You can see it defaults to Keep Existing, which will keep our existing global calendars. Updating exi existing would be the option to overwrite our global calendars with the ones incoming from the XCR schedule file. And insert new would just make a new copy of the incoming calendars while keeping our existing global calendars. So we're gonna stick with the default of keep existing. Let's take a look at this schedule file imported without overwriting any of our existing calendars. We're using the default setting of keep existing. look at the activities and we always want to start off with calculating the schedule. You can see that we're showing this project finishing on time, October 1st, 2017. If we look at the calendar settings for this particular calendar assigned to most of the construction activities, you can see that July 4th is a holiday, but work is planned for Monday, July 3rd. So let's delete this project and re-import it again with different import settings. This time, we're going to add new calendars to our database without overwriting our existing calendars. Picking the same XCR file. Now I've already set up these import configurations to insert new calendars. And again, we'll start off with calculating. And now you can see that from the same schedule file, we're seeing the project finishing three days late on October 4th. This can cause a lot of confusion and can be frustrating while you try and track down the reason for the difference. I'll save us some of that trouble. Let's take a look at July under this calendar. You can see that it's made a copy of this global calendar, added a little dash one after it. Notice that in this example here, we'll say that the contractor providing the schedule is planning on Monday, July 3rd being a non-working day. 
Losing this working day causes an activity further down the critical path to skip another weekend, resulting in a three-day loss total. Now, this can go both ways depending on what differences there are between the global calendars. Sometimes you can get results a lot more complicated than just this one here, with only one day of difference. And you can see that if we had chosen to overwrite our global calendar with this new global calendar, we'd start seeing differences in every other schedule that uses this global calendar. Suddenly we'd find all of them showing no work on Monday, July 3rd. A good way to avoid these issues is to exclusively make use of project-level calendars rather than global calendars. A project calendar is exclusive to the specific project file it is created in. Global calendars can still be maintained, as these will be the templates that your project calendars are created from. To define a project calendar, go to Calendars on the Enterprise menu, be sure Project is selected, and hit Add. This will bring up a list of all the global calendars in your database to choose one as a starting point. Once a global is selected, you will then name your project calendar. This can always be adjusted later, but you may find it useful to add some identifier, such as a project number, to quickly note what project this calendar is set up for. Your project calendar is now set up as an exact copy of the global calendar. To check the specifics, Click on Modify. Now, it's important to note the drop-down option at the bottom for Inherit Holidays and Exceptions from Global Calendar. This is going to default to the global calendar you used as a template. Any project inheriting holidays and exceptions is still associated with the global calendar. If you have any intention of sharing this file outside of your database, this is a bad idea. Setting this to none will keep your calendar completely independent from any other calendar files and projects in your database. When you're working exclusively with project calendars, you can be confident that the schedules you produce are being correctly viewed by anyone you're providing the XCR file to, regardless of their import settings. And conversely, when you're viewing a schedule provided to you by another party that has project calendars, you don't have to wonder or worry about there being any differences. I hope you learned a little something from this quick tip. Please visit the PMA Consultants website for more clips on best scheduling practices.